Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to consider the subject of magnetism. So we're going to take a bar magnet and we're going to look at the magnetic field that surrounds it and using some of that information that we can see on the screen we're going to generate a list of rules that magnetic flux obeys. Now you may be sitting here thinking why on an electrical training video are we talking about magnetism all of a sudden? Well the answer to that is that Magnetism and electricity are really closely joined together. In fact, what we call electricity is part of a much bigger phenomenon called electromagnetism. Now, what's really interesting about this electromagnetism is that it's one of the four fundamental forces that kind of govern how our universe runs. So you've got electromagnetism, gravity, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. And I always find it amazing that as electricians, we're kind of controlling one of those four fundamental forces. I think that's absolutely amazing. It's almost as if for your day job, you decided that you were going to change gravity and make it work for you. That instead of gravity pulling you to the floor today, you're going to make it pull you to the wall. Uh, we kind of do the same thing with electricity when we're building circuits and stuff. So I think that's a, a pretty special career to be involved in. Stay tuned to the end of the video because we will be answering a question that one of my learners asked me while we were delivering uh, this material as part of a taught session and also for a really good recap of the rules of magnetism and how that might affect your exams. So let's just try a little experiment to see if we can figure out what's going on with our bar magnet here. So you can see we've got a bar magnet. This bar magnet has uh, two poles, north and south. That's what the N and the S stand for. And we'll come back to what that means a little bit later on. What we're going to do first of all is just carry out a little experiment to see if we can visualize what's going on around our bar magnet. So I've got a packet of iron filings here. Now you may have done this experiment at school, but let's just have a little look at what happens when we start to scatter some uh, iron filings around our bar magnet. We'll see what this starts to look like. So hopefully you can start to see there that there is a pattern forming within the iron filing. So let's just give uh, this a little tap. And now we can start to see that pattern starting to form up much more neatly. We're seeing a pattern formed here because around our bar magnet there are what's called lines of magnetic flux. Now these lines of magnetic flux are kind of theoretical. Uh, they were invented as a way to help us understand the way that magnetic fields behave. But what you can see is that there is uh, a field that exists around the poles of our bar magnet. So you can see there that we've got uh, lines that join up the north pole and then they uh, head round to the south pole. What we can also see is that those lines actually continue round but as they go out of shot here, you can see that the lines are gradually just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But in fact, each and every one of these lines forms a complete loop. Now that's a really important point to bear in mind is that lines of magnetic flux form complete loops. So we've said that these lines of magnetic flux form complete loops around the bar magnet. Now there are rules that surround these lines of magnetic flux. What we're going to do is we're going to list those down and then what we're going to do is we're going to try and prove that one or two of them are true and explain why magnets behave the way that they do. So the first thing to know is that these loops, these complete loops, always go from north to south. So that is a really, really important point. So they flow from north to south. They have a definite direction to them. The lines of magnetic flux will never cross each other, so they cannot uh, cross over. And actually, you can kind of see that in the pattern that we've formed here. You can see that the loops go in continuous lines. They don't cross over. They contract to form the shortest loop possible. So these uh, loops of magnetic flux that we can see here are constantly trying to be as small as they can. Now you can see that, for example, these ones out here can't get any smaller because they've got additional uh, lines of magnetic flux between them and the magnet, which is stopping them from getting any smaller. The lines of magnetic flux can't be broken, so they are continuous. They can be reshaped, they can be remolded, which works to our advantage in the electrical industry very much, but that's where we're at. And then finally, two really important points. Now, you probably know from school that if you bring two north poles 
of two bar magnets together, they will try to repel. Now, the reason for that is that you've been told that uh, opposite poles will attract and poles that are alike will repel. However, we're going to refine our understanding of that a little bit now by saying that it's not the poles that attract and repel, it's the lines of magnetic flux that are alike repel and attract each other. So if you have lines of magnetic flux that are alike, they repel each other. If you have lines of magnetic flux that are opposite, they will attract each other. And we'll explain what we mean by that a little bit later on. Another point that we want to bear in mind, questions that we might get asked in our exam, is what are the enemies of magnets? In other words, what are things that will destroy the magnetic field surrounding a bar magnet? Well, there's three things. There is the application of heat. So if you apply heat to a bar magnet, it will start to lose its magnetism. If you uh, hit a bar magnet, it will uh, start to lose its magnetism. The magnetic field will become uh, weaker and less defined. And finally, if you subject the magnetic field to a stronger magnetic field, that can start to weaken and distort the magnetic field surrounding the bar magnet as well. So just bear those in mind for exam conditions. So what we've done now is we've put two bar magnets together and we've put them so that we've got the same pole facing each other. Now again, you probably know from your own experience that when you try and push these two bar magnets together, they're going to try and repel each other. They'll try and push each other apart. But let's reveal the magnetic field that surrounds them and have a think about why that is. So as you can see, we've got two magnetic fields surrounding the bar magnets. The magnetic uh, fields are coming from the North Pole and going to the South Pole externally to the bar magnet, as previously explained. And that really is the key point as to why these poles try to repel each other. Because if you trace one of the lines of magnetic flux out the end of this bar magnet, it comes from the North Pole, it goes around the outside to the South Pole. And the same thing's happening here. The line of magnetic flux is coming from the North Pole and it's going round to the South Pole. Now, we know that opposite uh, poles will attract and like poles, same as we've got here, will repel each other. But it's not necessarily the poles that are repelling each other, it's the fact that we've got lines of magnetic flux that are going in the same direction. So here, the lines of magnetic flux are both going that way and that way from each bar magnet, which means that the lines of magnetic flux themselves that are alike is what's doing the repelling. So let's have a look what happens when we bring these bar magnets closer together. So let me just take away the iron filings for a moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these two bar magnets a little bit closer together and I want to get them to the point where they're actually trying to repel each other like they are here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fix these in place so again we can see uh, that magnetic field between them. So in order to achieve this what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stick these uh, bar magnets down with a little bit of blue tack. So you'd be amazed how much we use blue tack in our videos. Solves an awful, awful lot of problems. Okay. Now again, as I bring this closer, it's trying desperately to repel, it's trying to push away. So I'm going to use a little bit of blue tack to hold these down. So that's trying to repel from the other. The blue tack's going to prevent that from happening. I'm going to bring back my iron filings, put that down on there, and then we'll just have a look at how that magnetic field has changed again. So let's give this a little tap. So again, you can see we've got the lines of magnetic flux very clearly, but what's happening is that lines of magnetic flux are being compressed in between those two poles there. You can see that the lines of magnetic flux are sort of being squished together and getting tighter and tighter to each other. But remember, they won't cross and they want to return to their natural shape, which means that they're constantly trying to push the two bar magnets apart.
So that's what's happening in the magnetic field between two bar magnets where you have like poles together. So what we've done now is we've swapped one of our magnets around. So you can see now we've got a north and a south pole close to each other. So we've got opposite poles. We know that these are going to try and attract each other. But again, let's try and figure out the reason why they're being attracted to each other. So let's put our iron filings down to reveal the magnetic field. Okay, now you can see that's what, what's happening here is that the two fields from the bar magnets have kind of joined together. If you look, particularly we're interested in the gap between here, you see we've got lines of magnetic flux that are going from north to south. Okay, so they're going from north to south there. These lines of magnetic flux, these loops being formed between the two uh, bar magnets are trying to follow one of the rules that we spoke about. They're trying to shrink down to become the smallest loop possible. So what that means is that there's nothing stopping these from getting smaller and smaller and what will happen is that those two magnets will be drawn to each other by those lines of magnetic flux trying to form the smallest loop possible. Again that is the reason why a north pole and a south pole will be attracted to each other. It's caused by those lines of magnetic flux trying to be as small as they can possibly be. So a question that was asked by one of my learners uh, as I was delivering this in the classroom was he'd seen obviously the effect of the magnetic field in a, a two-dimensional way like we've shown in the video but he asked if the magnetic field behaved in a three-dimensional way as well and that's a really really good question uh, and one that we can answer now. If we move the camera so that we're looking at this slightly more from the side now What you can see is that the iron filings are actually sticking up as well and if you let your eyes kind of follow the line of uh, the iron filings there you can see that they will form uh, a loop coming above the magnet as well so it stands to reason that that magnet uh, will also be extending a magnetic field below it also. So the magnetic field isn't just two-dimensional it surrounds the bar magnet completely. So let's just summarise those rules of magnetic flux, those all important rules that we covered in this video. We saw that lines of magnetic flux have a definite direction. Around the outside of the bar magnet, they go from north to south. Why are we being very specific about the fact that they uh, go north to south around the outside of the bar magnet? Well, because of course the second rule is that the lines of magnetic flux form complete loops. And that means that inside the bar magnet, they continue. The third rule is that the lines of flux never cross each other. They contract to form the shortest loop possible. The lines of magnetic flux cannot be broken. They can only be reshaped. And those two all important points that we wanted to consider, lines of magnetic flux that are alike repel. Lines of magnetic flux that are opposite attract. In a future video, we're going to see why those two points are so important for understanding how electricity and magnetism are connected to each other. Thank you for watching.